the conservation of biodiversity poses a big challenge in this day and age. According to the World Wildlife Fund experts, approximately 2,000 wild species become extinct every year, which means that species are disappearing 10,000 times faster than they would by means of natural evolution. In most cases, the decrease in biodiversity is caused by human economic activity. For centuries, humans were able to live and work in a surprisingly biodiverse habitat, the wooded meadow, but this has become rare in Europe, including Latvia. Parkveida ainavas ir vairākus gadu tūkstošu pastāvējuši kopā ar cilvēku. Savā ziņā cilvēki ar saviem ainavu ganām pūkiem iespējams pārņēm to, kas bija pirmatnīgi jūs laikos. Un tā tā sistēma pastāvēja vairāk gadu tūkstošu garumā līdz pēdējā simtgadē viņi sāk strauju izzust. Viņi ir interesanti ar to, ka tā ir ainava, kurā cilvēks var iegūt visus augļus, kas dzīvē nepieciešami. Tur ir gan koks, ne gan dažādi augļu koki. Tajās senajās ainavās tur bija arī nelielas aramzemītes, tur ganījās lopi. Tātad ļoti nelielā platībā spējas dzīvot cilvēks kopā ar ārkārtīgi lielu biodaudzveidību. In Estonia, scientists have counted over 60 different plant species in one square meter of wooded meadow. This is one of the highest species richness in the world. When uh, describing vegetation there, we at certain point discovered that uh, the density of species is uh, extremely high. Interesting thing there that uh, these are managed communities. Sort of early view that the most diverse should be communities in the wilderness seems to be wrong. Uh, how it can be that, uh, say, humans always, according to our common knowledge, influence the community so that uh, the diversity would decrease, but here vice versa. And for it is that the landscape resembles a patchwork. A small area contains numerous ecological niches and each is home to an array of species. Continuous human activity, such as herding livestock and harvesting hay, encouraged the development of patchwork landscapes and sustained relatively stable conditions which are a prerequisite for biodiversity. There are many more thick forests in the contemporary Latvian landscape than there were in the 18th and 19th centuries. The view from the Turaida Castle Tower towards the Gauja Valley is now all forest, but it didn't used to be so. Sākot ar litogrāfijām un beidzot ar latviešu vecmeisteriem, ar Latvijas laiku fotogrāfijām, ainau, ir redzams, ka ainau ir bijis pavisam savādāk. Ja? Un ka gadsimtiem ilgā lauka saimniecības, mešu saimniecības darbība bija izveidojis nu, daudz plašāku skatu šā ainau, nebija šie aizaugušie mēži. Apkārtējā lauka ir bijuši plaši un redzami un brīvi, tāpēc, ka viņi tika kopti, nevis aizlaist ar krūmiem. Tā kā ainau ir mainījusies. The few wooded meadows that remain in Latvia are located in the floodplains along the banks of the Gauja, Pededze and Stende rivers, where alluvial grasslands alternate with dry grasslands on calcareous substrates. Calcareous grasslands are characterized by plants such as quaking grass, maiden pink, mountain clover and wood cow wheat. The rare early purple orchid also grows here. In wooded meadows and pastures, a patchwork of scattered trees, groups of trees or shrubs alternate with vast grassland. These sunny and sparse conditions are a suitable habitat for many rare and endangered species. A range of lichen inhabit the sunlit old tree trunks and some have adapted to these exact living conditions. Apsvarmotā kalīcī, brungalvainā, henotēka, mazi, mazi ķērpīši, kas atgādina maz sēnītas milimetru augsts. Viņiem ir vajadzīga šī skrajā, gaišā ainava, skraimeža, parkveidīgā ainava. 
Un ja viņi kļūst ēnēnāk, tad viņi izzūd. Trees and shrubs in the wooded meadows are much leafier than the same species in the forest, and some are centuries old. The oaks that grow here provide a home for the orange polypore, a rare and vibrantly coloured wood fungus that only grows on trees that are two to three centuries old. Parkveida ainavām ir viens ļoti populārs simbols. Tad tas ir labkoku praugrauzes. Kad stāstām par parkveida ainavām, tad diezgan bieži cilvēki saka, nu, ko jūs visu laiku par to vienu vabolu runājat. Bet tas nav stāsts par vienu vabolu. Ir tā, ka cilvēki jau nespēja aptvērt visu dabas daudzveidību. Viņi nekad nevarēs izpētīt visus miljonus sugus. Tāpēc zinātnieki meklē tādas īpašās sugas, kuras izprasdami, kurām palīdzot, mēs palīdzam arī daudzām citām. Viņām ir pat savs īpašs nosaukums, tās sauc par lietussargu sugām. Umbrella species serve as a symbol for biodiversity in a specific environment. Deciduous tree hollows, like those inhabited by hermit beetles, provide suitable conditions for around 500 other species of beetle and invertebrate. By protecting the hermit beetle, we are also protecting the other species. Labkoka prolograuz ir pasaulē, tā var teikt, visaizsargātāka kukaiņu suga, jo to skār vislielāks skaits gan startautisku likumdošanas aktu, gan arī katras valsts teritorija, kurš suga ir sastopam, viņi arī lokāli aizsargājama. The hermit beetle is listed in the Red Data Book of Latvia as an endangered species. Its survival is dependent on environmental conditions, as the beetle leads a slow and conservative lifestyle, spending three to four years as a larva. After emerging, only 15% of the beetles leave the hollow and rarely travel further than 200 meters. If there are no suitable trees nearby, the beetles die, leaving no offspring. So large old trees with hollows full of decaying wood are vital for the survival of the hermit beetle. Pašlaik zinām atrādņu skaits šai sugai Latvijā 120, kas Eiropas meroga sastāda aptuveni arī 10% no visas zināmas populācijas. Labkoku praulgraužs pārsvarā konstē pēc to kāpuru sekundāram darbības pēdām, teiksim, pēc ekskrementiem. Protams, nekad nevar zināt, vai tie ir šī gada ekskrementi vai tie ir kaut kādi piecu gadu veci. Šī ir paštaisīta feromona lamata. Latvijā inovatīva metode, kā var viegli konstēt pašu vaboli. With the help of this method, Entomologists were able to locate the hermit beetle at Ungumoja Manor in the Gauja National Park. To ensure suitable living conditions for the beetle and other rare species in the area, the National Conservation Agency carried out landscape restoration and modelling as part of the Forest Habitat Restoration within the Gauja National Park project. To ensure dead trees are replaced in the future, young and middle-aged trees were preserved, as well as the old and hollow trees. Grassland forms an important part of the wooded meadow, and its establishment is encouraged by an area's inclusion in a pasture, where grazing animals help spread plant seed and chew saplings. The important thing here is the grazing. And uh, I think it's not so important if you graze with cattle or with sheep. But the grazing makes the area open and you will get herbs and flowers coming in summertime. Grass cutting is also vital to maintaining biodiversity in a wooded meadow. Because mowing particularly, it decreases the light competition in a grass layer. And light competition, of course, is a factor which influences species richness quite a bit. Now, uh, via this regular, not too frequent, mowing, we provide possibilities for many smaller species to find conditions for living there, which otherwise wouldn't live there. 
biodiversity is decreasing through human activity. In the end, this can threaten human life itself. So it's important for us to find ways to cohabit with nature. Via understanding wooded meadow, we can understand how it is possible to build a sustainable type of living in ecosystem. And that's, I think, important. Because there are not many uh, examples like that uh, where we can demonstrate how uh, humans' traditional sustainable way of management really is increasing the local diversity. For centuries, wooded meadows were a prime example of biodiversity and provided humans with almost everything they needed to survive. Combined with contemporary knowledge and opportunities, this example of the past could serve as an excellent model for human habitats of the future.